What's up guys, Tommy here, and uh, I just want to do another uh, military video, which I haven't done in uh, probably like four years on this channel, uh, and it's something I wish I kept up with, because um, I feel like there's a lot of information that people who are thinking about coming in, um, a lot of information that they want, uh, that's not necessarily out there, or, you know, recruiters can only give you so much, or not the right information. Um, so I think YouTube's a good platform to have people who are already in, who aren't in like those recruiting type jobs, uh, to get information out there. So today's video, I want to go over kind of like the GI Bill, um, not necessarily what each one entails, uh, each one as in the Montgomery GI Bill and the post 9-11. I'm going to go briefly into those, but there is plenty of videos out there kind of breaking down the differences. Um, but essentially, uh, when you first come in, in boot camp, uh, they're going to ask, so everyone gets the post 9-11, uh, no matter what, as long as you do 36 months of service and have an honorable discharge. Um, Montgomery GI Bill, you have to buy into. Uh, so in boot camp, you'll sign up for it. Uh, and then the first 12 months of service, so the, your first year in, you'll pay $100 a month um, towards that Montgomery GI Bill. So you pay $200 in total, $1,200 in total. Um, and then you're guaranteed those benefits. Uh, and then once it comes time for you to use those, once you get out, you can still choose the post 9-11, um, but you can only use one of them. Uh, there's a slight caveat to that, To uh, So say if you paid into the Montgomery GI Bill, you know, you do your service, you get out. The smarter thing to do, based on certain situations, is to go ahead and use your uh, post 9-11 instead of your Montgomery because you'll use your 36 months of post 9-11 and then you're allowed to use, um, you can kind of attach the Montgomery GI Bill to that and it gives you an extra 12 months, uh, if that makes sense. Um, it might make sense too if you kind of know already, you know, the differences between them. Uh, so, and if you go ahead and just use the Montgomery GI Bill right out of, um, as soon as you get out, it only gives you that 36 months and that's it. You can't attach the post 9-11 to the Montgomery. It only works the other way around. Um, but there is differences. One of them pays the money directly to the school. The other one pays money to you. And then in turn, you're responsible for paying the school. Um, so, uh, or post 9-11, uh, you'll get E5 BAH um, or housing allowance while you're uh, um, going to school full time. Um, you know, but there's tons of different differences between the two uh, that there's plenty of information out there on those differences. What I want this video to be is more on how you should use it uh, slash how to like kind of hack the system. Um, and this is personally how I'm planning on using it. Uh, so not many people know why you're in the military. There is a service called TA, tuition assistance, which um, allows you X amount of dollars per year uh, towards college while you're active duty. Uh, obviously, while you're active duty, you can't go to school full time. You know, a, a, a full 12 credits is commonly uh, what's used to, to say being a full time student. But you can take one or two classes a semester at night online that the military will pay for, and that doesn't come from your GI Bill. It comes from a whole other program called tuition assistance. Uh, so, you know, if you do, you know, uh, if you do that, you know, starting at your first command, you could essentially, you know, maybe have an associates after your first four years in the Navy, just doing those one or two classes a semester, you know, based on your degree and how many credits you need towards it, etc. But you can get a good chunk amount of schooling done in your first contract uh, towards a degree or even uh, get that associates. Another thing is you earn credits in your A schools and boot camp and every time you make rank, you get uh, credits... Um, What's the word? There's a certain word that, that you earn certain credits that schools will accept towards certain classes. So since between all my schooling in the Navy, I've been in for six years, I have close to like 60 credits that I could use towards different degrees. Obviously, all of them won't go towards the same one, but it's, you know, 10 or 12 of them could go towards the degree that I want. So pretty much what I'm getting at is going to school part-time in the military, you can earn a degree pretty fast um, without using your GI Bill. So that's what I recommend highly uh, to people. Even if you know you're going to do four and get out, you can still knock out a good chunk of that 
degree while you're in, um, which will then take you less time when you get out to just use that GI Bill uh, to where you will have to go to school full time and not necessarily make a, a lot of income. You can get that done over with a lot faster uh, to go ahead and get that, that job, that whatever job you, you seek with that degree. Um, and then, so if you're someone like me who knows that you're probably going to you know, definitely do more than 10 years, if not 20, there's like this new blended retirement system. So you can kind of retire a little bit, not retire a little bit earlier, but uh, get out earlier and, and the military uh, will match part of your TSP. Again, that's a whole another separate video uh, that I'm sure there's plenty of information out there on. But if you do over 10 years, what you can do is uh, you should definitely be able to finish your degree in 10 years using TA. Uh, if you, as long as you're committed and stay, and stay uh, dedicated to that goal, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to do that. Especially, you know, sea duty might be a little hard, but when you're on that shore duty, every three years you go to shore duty or four years, depending on your job, um, we, most time you're home by four or five in, at night, you can definitely knock out plenty of classes and finish that degree within 10 years. Now, once you're in for 10 years, uh, you can go ahead and give your GI Bill to your family members, uh, not mom, dad, sisters, but to spouse and children. So if you're a family man like myself, this is something to think about uh, so that you finish your degree first 10 years using TA, not touching your your GI Bill, so you have your degree, you're set to go as soon as you get out, and then you can go ahead and give your GI Bill, you can split it between multiple children, uh, you can give it to your spouse, like myself personally, I split it up 50-50 between my two children, um, so you need to have, uh, it's either four, now I'm giving you guys wrong information, I want to say it's six years Four years left on your contract before you can do it. So say you re-enlist for six years. As long as you have four years left on your contract from the day you're assigning uh, that GI Bill to your dependents with over 10 years in. Um, and then your kids are set for college. Uh, if not, enough money to pay for all of it. Enough money to pay for a decent amount depending on what kind of university they go to. Again, GI Bill uh, and TA is only good for undergraduate. I'm not 100% on that, but um, I know TA will only pay for undergraduate. So once you get a bachelor's, that's kind of that's kind of it. I believe GI Bill or Montgomery uh, will pay for like your master's. But the whole point of this video, of what I wanted, the, the point I wanted to get across is that there's something called TA, tuition assistance, that not many people know about. Uh, which will pay for your college, I want to say it's $4,000 a year towards college courses while you, while you are in the military active duty, and that money does not take away from your GI Bill. And then after you're in for 10 years, which by then you should have finished your degree, um, you can go ahead and give your GI Bill uh, and assign it to your children or, or wife or or both depending on how many you have and how many times you can split up the percentages but for me i'm gonna go ahead and do it 50 50 because i have two children um and now you know that they're taken care of uh or their college is taken care of um and then you got your degree without even needing to touch your job bill which is a win um kind of your active duty getting paid full time and still going to school and the military will pay for your school so it's a win-win all around. Uh, so that's something that not a lot of people know about or think about. But if you're someone like me who knows you're going to be in for a lot longer than just your first term, uh, I'm already on my second term. I've re-enlisted once. I think this is the best plan for you, especially if you're a family man or plan on being a family man and have children, uh, is just knock out as much schooling as you can, one or two classes a semester using that TA. And then once you reach that 10-year mark in your career, you can go ahead and assign your GI Bill to your dependents and know that they're taken care of uh, as well. So any other questions, leave down in the comment. Um, like I said, there's tons of information out there on the differences between the GI Bill and the Montgomery GI Bill. Uh, I'm not an expert at all, um, but there is tons of people out there who make good quality videos um, really breaking out the differences between the both. Um, and then, uh, yeah, any other questions, leave them down in the comment, send me a message. And I'm going to try to do more military videos on this on this channel. Uh, 
my two boot camp videos and my sub school video uh, did really well. And for whatever reason, I decided uh, to not make more videos uh, on military topics. So I uh, appreciate you guys for watching. Um, and uh, I hope you guys got, uh, you know, some, some knowledge out of this video. Have a good one. See you later.